Greetings and welcome. This is Rajiv Makhni on your favorite show, The Cell Guru Show. And today we've got some really interesting things. That company that made waves, headlines, absolutely and totally the kind of euphoria and hype that is usually reserved for Apple. Nothing comes up with their third product. And this is the Nothing Ear Stick. So, very, very different design. Strangely enough, the design does very well. The product is great. Custom design, 12.6 mm drivers, good sound quality, seven hour battery life. But can I tell you something really strange? I mean, I love everything about it, including this very satisfying click. But the price for a no noise cancellation TWS earbud, I think, is a bit too much. Then we'll move on to the iPhone 14 Plus. So after nothing, Apple comes in. So everything is the same as the iPhone 14, just a bigger screen, better battery performance. But I have to say, if you really look at it, what are your top priorities in a phone? A bigger screen and better battery, right? The 14 otherwise is a great phone. So is this the phone to buy? Is this maybe the best iPhone in 2022? And then we'll move on to a new Motorola phone, the G72, the latest phone in the G series. It's not 5G enabled, which is shocking, supports only 4G Motorola U that took on the mantle of being 5G, 5G, 5G. Suddenly, you've taken on a 4G phone. Good camera on a budget phone, but it's not a gaming device. It's under 20,000 rupees, but once again, no 5G. And then Nokia Classics, the 2660 Flip and the 8210 4G, reintroducing these Nokia Classics. Workhorse phones, both in look and feel. The Flip brings back that original Flip phone, slightly bigger than the original. The 8210 comes with a very similar design language as the original. But again, both phones come with 4G connectivity, but the price points dramatically different. That and a whole lot more happening on The Cell Guru Show with me. Our top story, our big review today is this, the Nothing Ear Stick, or as I call it, the Nothing Ear Lipstick. So lipstick-shaped package, small and light, but you know, because of the form factor, this is not as easy. It's not easy to pocket like you would with other TWS earbuds. This one sticks out a bit. Clicks instead of swipe gestures for playback. Audio playback was fantastic. Sound quality was very, very full. They actually have a custom design driver for this, so great sound quality. But let me tell you where the problem really starts off. The problem starts off with the price and the fact that it's around 8,000 rupees with no noise cancellation. Much ado about nothing or nothing to scoff at. Carl Pays Nothing is back at the hardware game with a brand new pair of true wireless earphones. Following the success of Year One, the company is once again pushing the envelope of design. But is it all looks here or is there some substance here? The Earstick One is once again taking a design-forward approach with its hardware. The lipstick-shaped package is designed to be small and light and easy to tuck away into a pocket. You'll find basics like a USB-C port tucked away here, but nothing is also making a big deal of the twist to open styling that makes it easy to click open and pull out the earbuds. We found the tactile aspect of the case to be surprisingly enjoyable, so don't be surprised if you end up using the earphones as a fidget toy. Similarly, the earbuds now use a series of clicks instead of swipe gestures for playback controls. We preferred this over the standard swipe based controls that can be harder to control in more active environment. The earbuds themselves follow the half in ear styling that allows for a lot more spatial awareness. Allowing ambient sounds to get in will likely be a better fit for users who want to hear what's happening around them. Predictably, this also means that the earphones don't have ANC and you will have to splurge a bit more on the full fledged ear ones for active noise cancellation support. Meanwhile, Nothing claims that its new earphones have the most advanced audio settings yet and the custom designed 12.6mm drivers are both louder and better sounding to compensate for the lack of ANC. We found the audio playback to be full sounding with ample bass. The overall volume levels were sufficient even for listening in outdoor settings. There is an extra focus on the mids to make vocals shine, but all in all, the ear stick sounds plenty good. Yes, there's a full-fledged equalizer too for those who want to maximize the sound. Interestingly enough, nothing has also fixed some of our gripes with the original ear one. We observed that the Nothing Ear Stick does a much better job of holding onto a rock-solid signal. No more disconnections while listening to music. Similarly, the microphones can comfortably cancel out background noise and audio calls tend to sound great. Battery life too is better at 7 hours. 
priced at 8499 rupees the nothing ear stick doesn't sit above the ear one but offers an excellent alternative option for those who prefer a different style of earphones or sound quality the distinctive design further helps it stand out and with solid fundamentals it's hard to go wrong with the ear stick rubina munga ndtv and now let's move on to our next top story the iPhone 14 plus many of you have been waiting for it we spent a lot of time with this phone this is the iPhone 14 ka bada bhai everything else is the same but the bigger screen and bigger battery makes a big difference so 6.7 inch display bigger than the iPhone 14 a15 bionic chip which is not exactly the greatest great battery backup maybe the best battery on any iPhone cameras are the same as the iPhone 14 everything else is fantastic and the price starts at 89900 let me declare this right? right i think in every which way if you're not buying any of the pros then this is the iphone to buy the iphone 14 plus sits comfortably between the iphone 14 and the more expensive iphone 14 pro as far as looks go apple gets that right every time the iphone 14 plus is the same size as the pro max It houses a 6.7 inch OLED screen. In spite of the larger screen, the weight of the phone is about 203 grams, much lighter than the Pro Max. It gets more or less the same specifications as the iPhone 14 with just a few upgrades. It however misses out on the latest tech scene on the more expensive iPhone 14 series. The iPhone 14 Plus does not get the dynamic island nor does it get the A16 Bionic chip and it also does not get the 48 megapixel camera. The 6.7 inch OLED display is a sight to watch out for. Watching HD content is a beautiful experience. It's still an excellent 458 ppi display. There is no always on display or adaptive refresh rate here, but you will be more than happy with the 60 hertz refresh rate. Apple says that the peak brightness can go as high as 1200 nits. On the performance front, it gets the A15 Bionic chip from last year's iPhone 13 Pro series. Now though it might not be the latest top of the line A16 Bionic chip but that does not mean that the performance of the phone falters. Using the phone is a breeze and it can handle anything that you throw at it with ease. A major upgrade that the iPhone 14 Plus gets over the iPhone 14 is the battery life. With moderate use the battery can easily last you up to 2 days. That is a major upgrade for Apple and iPhone 14 Plus has one of the best batteries in all of the 14 series lineup. Coming to the cameras, though the iPhone 14 Plus does not get the 48 megapixel main sensor, the dual camera setup of 12 megapixel plus 12 megapixel does a brilliant job. It's got the premium lens configuration of the last year's 13 Pro series. The 12 megapixel primary shooter captured some rich, punchy colors with a lot of details, and the dynamic range was spot on. The ultra wide camera is still as good. The iPhone 14 Plus does gain from Apple's updated image processing called Photogenic Engine. It does get the action mode and does a fabulous job in bringing stabilization to your videos and photos. It is no doubt that the iPhone 14 Plus is a good powerful phone, so should you get it. If you are on iPhone 11 or an older model or are looking to upgrade to an iPhone but don't have the budget for the more expensive Pro series, then this definitely is the iPhone for you. But if you are someone who has a newer model of the iPhone, our recommendation would be to hold on. It is priced starting eighty nine thousand nine hundred rupees for the one twenty eight GB variant, and gets a happy thumbs up from us. Let's take a quick break right now, and we come back. Lots more happening on the Sell Guru Show. Our next review is the Motorola G72, the latest phone from Motorola. Nice premium design, weighs about 166 grams, 6.6 inch OLED display, FHD plus resolution. So again, the good part: 120 hertz refresh rate with 1300 nits of peak brightness. So the screen is awesome. Then the camera: 108 megapixel primary lens, 8 megapixel ultra wide depth sensor. Well, you know. Forget about that 2 megapixel macro. Forget about that. The 16 megapixel front camera also does well. The MediaTek Helio G99 is a good processor to have. 5000 mAh battery, 33 watt fast charging. Priced at 18,999. Everything sounds absolutely wonderful, right? Wrong. It's 
a 4G phone. Motorola, you said you're taking on the mantle of 5G in India because you said India is going to be a 5G nation, which we are now. Can you take out a 4G phone? Motorola has been on a launching spree for the last couple of months. Its latest entrant is the Moto G72 as part of the G-Series. While most companies are now offering 5G-enabled smartphones, the G72 is touted as a no-compromise 4G phone. Motorola has gone all out with impressive specifications for a budget phone under the 20K segment. But is it the no-nonsense phone that Moto is claiming it to be? Or will this fizzle away in the sea of competition? We find out in our review. One thing that Motorola gets right on most occasions is the design of the phone. The back panel comes with an all PMMA construction which has a matte finish. This helps keep the fingerprint smudges at bay. Despite the polycarbonate back and a plastic frame, the device does not look or feel cheap. It has a very premium look to it. The phone is lightweight at 166 grams. It comes with IP52 rating to offer protection from water and dust particles. Thanks to the curved back, the in-hand feel of the phone is pretty comfortable. It comes with an in-display fingerprint scanner that works well and we have no complaints on that front. Now let's talk about the display. Motorola has given a 6.6 inch POLED display with Full HD resolution and an HDR10 Plus certification. It comes with a 120Hz refresh rate. The 10-bit display supports a billion colors and the viewing experience was brilliant. Adding to the experience is the 120Hz refresh rate. The display is buttery smooth and we did not feel any lags or stutters while using the device. The thin bezels also added to the experience. Thanks to the 1300 nits of peak brightness, using the phone under direct sunlight was a breeze. All in all, we had a great experience while using the display. Motorola G72 comes with a triple camera setup, a 108MP primary lens, an 8MP ultra-wide lens with depth sensor and a 2MP macro lens. A budget phone with a massive 108 MP primary camera. The images taken outdoors are nice and bright with plenty of details and good dynamic range. But that's where it ends. The low light images taken from the primary camera falters. There are not a lot of details and the colors are muted. The 8 MP ultra wide camera just about gets the job done. The dynamic range is spot on but the rest much better. Motorola needs to work on its camera capabilities here. Moto has done a good job with the 16MP front camera. All that power under the hood comes from the MediaTek Helio G99 SoC. This is not a gaming phone and Motorola knows that. Where the phone shines though is handling the everyday tasks. Scrolling the internet, browsing social media, watching HD content. We had no complaints on this front and had a good experience. The phone runs on Android 12 with my UX 3.0. The phone comes with a big 5000mAh battery and supports 33W fast charging. As the phone is not meant for heavy usage, it will easily last you a day. Motorola has launched the Moto G72 in only one variant, the 6GB RAM and 128GB storage, priced at Rs. 18,999. If you're looking for a budget gaming device, this is not the phone for you. Neither is it if you are a photography enthusiast. But if you're someone who is looking for a phone for everyday usage without the fancy frills, then this is a phone you should consider. Now let's move on to the Nokia Classics, the 2660 Flip and the 8210 4G. Both were iconic phones of their time, absolutely fantastic. The Flip phone, you know, nice lightweight phone, 123 grams, 1.77 inch display inside. But remember, this is a different category of phones. 2.8 inch display on the outside, it has a Unisoc processor, 0.3 megapixel camera. So it's almost like classic and we are going back almost to those phones. The price, of course, is around 4 4,500 rupees and the 82104G is 2.8 inch display, 4G, FM radio, MP3 player, Bluetooth 5.0. So slightly more advanced phone but just by that much, right? And this one is priced at 3,999. I think the good part is that these are classics. The other part of it is that these, if you're a smartphone user, can look a little antiquated. Nostalgia is a powerful drug and HMD Global's take on Nokia has been banking hard on buyers reminiscing about the old times. Back at it again with a duo of classically tinged phones with modern day connectivity, Nokia has introduced the Nokia 2660 Flip 
and the Nokia 8210. Two 4G classics that bring back legendary designs, but is there still room for feature phones? Let's find out. Between the two phones, the Nokia 2660 Flip 4G is the one that strikes out the most. In an age of foldable display equipped devices, the 2660 Flip is the perfect antithesis to feature overload and shows us just how far we've come with phones. While the 2660 Flip pays homage to the original 2660, it has made significant changes all around. For one, the oversized design isn't quite as dainty and pocketable as before. The heavy-duty polycarbonate shell feels exceptionally durable and solid, but it is far from premium to look at. These are workhorse phones, both in look and feel. Lacking high-end cameras and gigantic displays, the 2660 Flip comes in at a mere 123 grams, which makes it very comfortable to hold all day. Users will find a 1.77-inch display on the outside for call identification and a 2.8-inch screen on the inside. Small by modern standards, it is perfectly serviceable here because, well, this is a feature phone and the list of features is pretty short. That said, a 1GHz Unisoc processor keeps the phone ticking along at a speedy clip. How's the keyboard, you ask? Well, the sheer size of the keyboard is absolutely luxurious at first glance. Coming from on-screen keyboards, the largest keypad here is Bliss, as long as you've brushed up on your T9 texting. We wish that the keyboard was a bit firmer to the touch as the spongy membrane can be a bit finicky to get fast on. Elsewhere, there's a 0.3 megapixel camera with an LED flash to further remind you how much we take modern smartphone cameras for granted. In terms of multimedia playback, a 3.5mm jack is included as well as a memory card slot. You'll probably want to cancel that Spotify subscription though as the best way to listen to music here is with your own music files. Finally, an emergency button is also provided so that elderly users can directly dial up loved ones. Coming to the Nokia 8210 4G, it continues with the similar design language as the original and has a steady build quality. Just like the original, this also has a 2.8 inch display. It comes with a zoom UI and an easy to use interface. It might be small in size and lightweight, but just like its predecessor, it houses a big battery and will not run out on you anytime soon. The polycarbonate body feels strong and unlike some of the new age devices, this will not break on falling from your hand. Nokia claims the 8210 4G is just as durable as before. The Nokia 8210 comes with 4G and voiceover LTE, but that's about it when it comes to upgrades. You get all the original features such as FM radio, MP3 player, Bluetooth 5.0 and a 3.5mm headphone jack. The handset comes powered by Unisoc T107 chipset and packs 48 MB RAM paired with 128 MB internal storage. The phone features a micro SD card slot which can be used to expand the storage up to 32 GB. And finally, it has a 0.3 megapixel rear camera. One needs to brush up on one's keyboard typing skills to be able to use the T9 keyboard. But the response is buttery smooth and it was a delight to use the keyboard after so long. The Nokia 2660 Flip and the Nokia 8210 look like a blast from the past that is ever so slightly out of touch with modern smartphone use, lacking many, if not all, the features that buyers take for granted and an eye-watering price tag of Rs 4,699 and Rs 3,999, the two phones air too close to entry-level smartphones to be a logical choice. However, if you've been craving some nostalgia in your life or just need a basic second phone for calls and messages. It is hard to go wrong here. That then was the Sale Guru Show with so many different things we explored this week, but lots more coming up next week. I'll see you then.